Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Bamba here and I'm excited because in this video I'm going to be sharing how to backtest a Forex trading strategy in 2019 as well as three tips on how to optimize your backtesting sessions. So get something to take notes with, get ready for this session because I believe it's going to add a lot of value. So let's jump into this. So first and foremost, the platform that I'm using to backtest and what I use for all of my trading is something called TradingView. Now, I will leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. Definitely recommend checking it out. There's a free version and a paid version. Entirely up to you what you choose. Obviously, there's going to be more tools that you can use on the paid version, but entirely up to you. So as you can see from the layout, very clean, very simple, very easy to use. And it's just overall clean software to use. So definitely recommend checking that out. Now. Let's go into backtesting. So the very first thing to bear in mind when you're backtesting is to focus on the higher time frame structure. Now, from past experience and through talking to a lot of people on backtesting, I find a lot of people get super zoomed into the one hour chart and the lower time frames and just totally ignore the higher time frame structure. So very important that you focus on the higher time frames before you drop to the one hour. So let's go into the daily chart first and foremost. So a tool that I like to use is called the vertical line tool. So I go on the vertical line right here and I'll put that on from 2017 onwards. So the time of this video is May 2019. So the most important thing for me is to focus on the most recent two years of data. The reason I say this is because the market evolves over time, human psychology evolves over time, therefore patterns evolve slightly. So the most recent two years of price action is going to give you the most accurate form of data to test amongst your strategy and how it's going to play out over the course of those two years. So just a little tip there for you to implement. So as I said before, I've got a little vertical line to implement onto the charts here. This is going to give us a great guideline, obviously, when we drop to the lower time frames of what data we're testing. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to draw in the high time frame structure and I'll join you in a couple of minutes. So now that I've drawn in the high time frame structure, it's important to realize what you're looking at when you drop to the lower time frames. So in this situation, what am I seeing this as? So I'm seeing this bigger structure as this is the impulse this is the correction so this section right here is the correction so impulse correction and then looking for potentially another impulse to complete to at least here if not break through so that's what i'm looking at when i go to the higher time frames to the lower time frame sorry and important to realize that so let's drop to the one hour chart and have a look at the trades so there's a very handy tool on TradingView called GoTo. If you look here, if you go to, if you click on that, you can then rewind price to that date. And what that allows you to do is not to see any future price actions so that you don't have any biased mindset when you go into the market. So I think you can only go back to the start of 2017, but I'm going to try going back to 1st of December, 2016. Yeah, so you can only see goes back to the 3rd of January 2017. I haven't seen any price action. So what I'm going to do is just use the replay mode on trading view and just rewind price a little bit. And I can't see any data. So I'm just going to rewind price to, uh, let's, say the, let's say the 19th of December, just before the start of the year, just so I know what I'm looking at. So I haven't seen any, any prior data apart from what I saw on a daily chart previously. So looking at selling opportunities to the downside because this is just a bigger correction on the higher time frames. So give me a couple of seconds. I'm just going to play this data out. And if I do look for any setups, I'll join you right back here. So I've just played a bit of price action and I am looking at a possible setup around this area. So I'm just going to talk you through that now. Looking for selling opportunities because of the high time frame structure. The two areas that I'm looking at is this double top area around here. And then if price does break and nothing's really changed, I'm looking at this structure here for selling opportunities. So any area around there looking for selling opportunities to the downside. So this brings me on nicely to tip number two, which is to forecast whilst you back test. So what I mean by that is if you just bear with me. Let's let's do this in real time. 
all you're basically doing is this with this is to plan ahead of trades before they happen. So it's almost like predicting the price action before it's happened, but in a smart way, and it gets your subconscious mind adjusted to what you're going to expect or something similar to what you're going to expect in the live markets. The reason this is important is because if that setup materializes, and obviously we know this through back testing and stuff, you just it just releases zero hesitation or it's going to reduce hesitation a lot more. So very, very important that you do that. It's just a little tip that I thought I'd drop in there. So looking at anything like this, any sort of setup around these areas at the one, two, three, top of the structure, anything along these lines here, I'll be looking for a trade and then I'm going to grab a risk to reward tool that's available on trading view. If you just go into the one into down six, six tools, and you have the long position or the short position. Now looking for a short in this situation, so I'm just going to put the rough toward tool on and just scope out potential opportunities. So you can see we've got 4% to there. Overall target of just under 20%. So if we do get that bigger drop, which we are expecting on this pair, um, then this is going to be a really nice trade to take advantage of. So yeah, looking for that trade at the top or on the break if we do get a smaller ascending formation. If this does break out of the high, then I'll be looking for something, any sort of ascending formation like this at the top of the structure here, anything like that. So very handy. By the way, FYI, this this tool that I've just used here, it's called Bars Pattern, helps you duplicate the price action in the past. So if you go onto the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh option down, there's something called Bars Pattern. And you can just basically duplicate price action and it helps you identify what you're expecting in the future and just gives you a good forecast. So that's super helpful. So let's play this out. So join you back here in a couple of minutes when I played out price action. So we can see right now we have this ascending formation at the top of the structure. So we've got this double top area. We've actually broken slightly and potentially a false breakout. So looking for any selling opportunities around this area. So what I'm gonna do is just, if this was live market, I'd be placing an entry order just below here. Could potentially filter that on the 15 minute, but for these purposes, just gonna use a one hour, 35 pip stop, targeting the low for about 2.5% profit. And then overall target that we forecast before, this is actually around about 13. So looking good, looking good to take that. If we do get triggered in, then I'll update you. Yeah, so triggered into the trade right now. So once I get triggered into the trade, here's the important part, is to take a screenshot just to make sure that when you're looking back on these trades, you know exactly why you took the trade, which obviously accelerates the progression and the improvement. So join me back here in a couple of seconds when I just write a quick annotation So now I've done, done that quick annotation, I'm going to take a screenshot. So again, a feature of TradingView, we have this snapshot tool here. So we could take a snapshot, use that. It gives you a image URL to then copy. So you can copy that URL and just to paste on a spreadsheet. So I'm going to bring up a quick basic spreadsheet that I use for backtesting and just paste it in here. So you can see with this spreadsheet, also basically done is put the pair, direction, long or short, the date of the trade, before screenshot, after screenshot, what strategy it was, was the trade a win, break even or a loss, the profit or loss percentage, and then any sort of comments that I have about the trade. So in this section, I've taken a screenshot before the trade. So I'm gonna paste that in there right now. And then if you do wanna look back on that, this is where it's really helpful, is if we click on that link, it will bring you to the real life picture of what you were looking at. So you can see there's a clear annotation. I've described exactly what I was looking for and why I took the trade. And it's just obviously good to good for improvement purposes. If you do make any mistakes, then you can just review that. And it's just very, very important. So that's something to bear in mind. So we're taking that. I'm just going to play this out in the live markets. So impulsed away from the entry. So I'm going to move to break even at this point. So I'm just going to use a horizontal ray on the tools option. I'm going to put this in there around about break even area and I'm just going to just adjust it slightly just for my stop loss 
very simple to, temp to set a template up like that. And yeah, just manage. The most important thing is you manage it exactly the same as you would in live market. So just be honest with yourself on how you managed it. Don't try and cheat in any way. I'm sure we've all done that in the past, but it's just important to be honest with yourself. And that's where the most growth is going to happen. So bear that in mind. So you're now joining me back. I've just been taken out of the trade for 13.2% profit, which is very nice. Obviously, this, this trade worked out to be a win. Obviously, not, not, not always going to be a win. This did happen to be a win, but you're going to take losses. You're going to take break-evens. It's just a part of the game. It's just a part of the probability model working its way out over time. So important to realize that. Don't get caught up in the fact that every trade is going to be a win. It's definitely not. But if you have an edge in the market, it will play out over time, over the course of a sequence of trades. So that's super important to, to understand. So I've been taking out this trade now for 13.2. What I'm go now going to do is take another screenshot and just just so that I can see exactly how I manage this. So I'm just going to add a little bit of information to this. Once again, going to go to this snapshot tool at the top right hand corner of the screen, take a snapshot. I'm going to copy that. Once again, go to the spreadsheet that I used before. Once again, go to the spreadsheet after screenshot, post that in there. And then again, you have before, after, see direction, it was short. The date was the 28th of, 28th of the 12th, 2016. The strategy was a Falcon style strategy of risk entry. Was it a win, break even or a loss? It was a win in the situation, 13.2. And then any sort of comments you have about the trade, you can post that in there. And then the, the good thing about this is if you start to notice any patterns within your backtesting, you're gonna likely pick it up here, which you, again is gonna allow you to adjust that and then obviously improve and grow as a trader. So super, super important. And then that's basically it in a, in a in a nutshell, the only other thing to add is that once I've done this, I'll obviously delete this, delete all the structure, re-evolve anything that I need to. If I need to, then I'll back up to the higher time frames once again and repeat the whole process as before. Um, just just to just so I get a, a more accurate form of data, especially if this did evolve back into the pattern and, and such and such. So definitely important to understand. Now, with the three tips, I said I was gonna mention three tips. I've mentioned two so far. I think I've mentioned all three so far in this video, but I'm gonna answer that right now. And uh, hopefully it's gonna give you a, a good foundation into your own back testing. And hopefully you take away this video and take some value away from this, apply it into your own trading, hopefully it helps. So tip number one is to forecast while you shoot back test to stay 10 steps ahead of the market. Now you see, before I took that trade, I knew exactly what I was looking for. We just replay that. Back in these areas, if you wind back to the start of the video, I knew exactly that I was looking for a sell, sell setup, either here or here. So with that in mind, when that setup formed, there was no real hesitation and I just set the entry order and took the trade because I planned for it in advance. So that's super important. If you're not planning for trades in advance and then that trade just happens sometimes, not all the time, but you, you may miss trades and you may be more hesitant because of the nature of not preparing for the trades. So super important to understand. The second tip is to focus primarily on the most recent data over the past two years. Now, we know the market evolves over time, human psychology evolves slightly over time, and human behavior. Now, these patterns obviously play out over and over again because human behavior stays the same pretty much, but the patterns will evolve slightly, different structures will play out differently, and yeah, over the most past two years will be the most recent price action you can work with. 
test your strategy out, see the strike rate, see the wins, the break-evens, the losses, and just get a good idea of what your edge is in the market and just really see how it plays out. So very important to understand. And the last tip is to not to be too zoomed in on the one hour. As you can see, before I dropped to the one hour chart, I already knew what the high time frame structure was. If I was to if I was to start the chart here, if I was to start the chart super zoomed in on the one hour, you see how you could just draw in any structure and you just get caught up in average trades all the time, which is exactly what I used to do. So I learned from my mistakes, backed out to the high time frames to start off with before jumping into the one hour and the lower time frames. So very important to understand. Lastly, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't subscribed already and you are new to this channel, please uh, consider subscribing. And there's definitely gonna be a lot more future content around this, different processes, and just overall just adding a lot of value and hopefully things that you can take away and apply into your own trading and into your own life that's gonna help massively. So really excited for future content. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you took away notes. Feel free to watch this video over and over again. Sometimes good going back to it twice, three times and just making sure you understand exactly how things are being implemented and just that you fully understand it. So definitely implement that. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Speak to you all soon.